Question seven then. This really does look like a hard question, but it, I'm going to tell you now, it's actually a bit simpler than it looks. It's actually a question on combining vectors. So don't get confused when you read through the question. Think, what have I done that this question is all about? William is a search and rescue pilot in a helicopter. He's trying to help some walkers on a mountain by dropping them some supplies from his helicopter. So far we haven't actually got any real information to help us with the question. It's just the context. The supplies have a small parachute, so they fall with a steady vertical velocity of 12 meters per second. So we have some data there. That's a velocity. Remember, velocities are vectors. Look at the diagram. So again, here's the helicopter, the walkers, and two other vectors. The distance here, we don't know. We don't really need to worry about that at first. See the question mark? Just ignore that for now. We do have the wind velocity is 9 meters per second in this direction. It's a vector. So, what is the size of the resultant velocity of the supplies as they fall? You need to combine those two vectors to create the resultant vector. Now, I'll give you a little tip. There is actually two methods that you can use to do this. Okay, you've got a horizontal velocity of nine meters per second, and you have a vertical velocity of 12 meters per second. Okay. Now, you can either do that by scale drawing, or you can use a triangle method to calculate the resultant velocity and you're only asked to work out the size you are not given any angles so you do need you, you do not need to do trick so think about the other triangle method that you can possibly use okay i'm going to ask you to pause the video have a little go and then start the video again and i'll show you what you could have done okay well the first method would be by scale drawing and actually, if you measured out a horizontal velocity of 9 centimetres with a ruler, do that accurately, and you combine then onto that the vertical velocity 12 metres per second, so represented by 12 centimetres, then actually the resultant velocity would be that there. Okay, and that's called a scale drawing. That would be the resultant velocity. You could just measure how many centimetres that was and write your answer down here. OK, well, fair enough, but that's just one method. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you're not so comfortable with that. Well, actually, you should recognise now you've got a right angle triangle of which you know this side is 9 and this side is 12. Now, a nice simple maths question is applying Pythagoras is theorem. The square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the two smaller squares. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I know you can do that. So 9 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. Add those two up on my calculator. 9 squared plus 12 squared equals 225 so C is the root of 225 which is 15 and you must put the unit on the end it's a velocity 15 meters per second okay so two ways to achieve that It takes five seconds for the supplies to fall to the walkers. So yes, in our first sentence here, that's some useful data. That's a time, five seconds, for the supplies to fall to the walkers. William's co-pilot the, realises the supplies need to be dropped before the helicopter is vertically above the walkers. He says the supplies should be dropped from D, 20 metres from being vertically above. So we've got a time and we've got a distance. Is the co-pilot correct? 
OK. Show any working you use to draw your conclusion. Well, actually, you do need to use a little bit of data from the previous question here. Basically, this, what he's realised is that there is a horizontal velocity that's going to act on the supplies, and that is 9 metres per second. Now, if it takes 5 seconds for them to fall, they're going to travel a certain distance horizontally as well as travelling downwards. And we don't need to worry about the vertical component of the velocity, we just need to worry about this 9 metres per second, the wind blowing it in a horizontal direction. Think about some basic equations that you know, you've got some data, do some working out and state whether he is correct. Although the answer is not for the statement, it's for the calculations that you need to do. OK, pause the video, have a little go and tell me if he's correct. OK, well the equation that you should have used is that speed equals distance divided by time. Don't get too confused by the algebra there. V is velocity, S is displacement or distance, T is time. And we actually know speed and we know time and we need to decide whether 20, the distance, is correct. So we rearrange that equation to be distance is speed times time. 9 metres per second times 5 seconds, well, actually, that's 45 metres. So, no, he's not correct. He should be 45 metres from the walkers. 45 horizontal metres from the walkers. OK? It is important that you do answer the questions to say no, he's not correct, and just give the calculation. But you must do the calculation, must do a calculation to justify this. You could work the other way. You could say 20 divided by 5 is actually only uh, 4 metres per second, um, which is not the horizontal speed that the package, that the parachute, would is going to travel in the wind. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Thank you very much.